I'm telling you right now, and, and I'll just say this. I've seen I've seen every team almost in baseball this year live. The three teams that stand out to me the most, the Toronto, and I said this on air, the Toronto Blue Jays, when you see them in person for the first time, swing the bats, you're like, damn. They're, they're like, it's like going to a softball tournament and they're like that one team that's got like their own uniforms and bags. And you're like, dude, we just came to drink beer and hang out. Yeah, like, yeah, shorts yeah. and cutoffs. Yeah. yeah, right. That's the Blue Jays. Um, Tampa shows up and they're the most athletic baseball team I've ever seen. Like every guy is just like, it's amazing how athletic they are. Like and they always have out. a prospect that they come up every year and it's the top prospect in baseball. Right. And I know like, and I know Kevin Cash worked for the Indians for a little while. Their hitting coach worked for the, so I know their coaches a, a little bit and hung out with them. And they're like, Dre, they're like, we've got more coming. I'm like, how? You know, I'm like, <laughs> you already got, yeah, you already got a ton of prospects. And then the Brewers, those three teams step out. I truly feel we're going to see the Brewers, Dodgers in the NLCS. And I, I think the Brewers can do it. I really do. I'm just saying it, and I'm not saying it because I'm with you guys. Francisco, you could tell the people. I, I DM'd you and said, yeah. hey, man, I owe you. I want to talk about the Brewers because they you were did, fantastic to watch. Yeah. Uh, well, hey, let's let's jump into the Brewers then. Um, you w- Did you work those games that they were uh, yes. when we uh, – Okay. What were your just overall thoughts on the team? Um, First of all, I've told you guys, I pay attention to more than just my ball club. Second of all, I'm a big uh, – when Rowdy Telez first came up in Toronto, um, I got a son who's named Andre Joseph, and I'm. they call me the Tasmanian de- devil, like the guys I work with. Okay. And they called my son – as soon as we saw Rowdy the first time, they're like, there's Rowdy. They're, so they called my son Rowdy Jr. So first day, I went right over to Rowdy. And I was like, man, I got to talk to you. And we hit it off. And then, of course, he got hurt that night, which sucked because yeah. I like that guy. And I kind of got my intel on the Brewers from Rowdy because Rowdy was like, yeah, I got traded over here. It sucked. You know, I was with Tampa or with Toronto. And I came up with those guys. Um, and he goes, and, and I'm a big personality. And I didn't know if I could really be myself. And he was like, so a couple days in. And he goes, dude, I love this bleeping team. I would say it if you want me to say it because I usually do curse. But um, <laughs> it was awesome because because I was like recording. I was like, man, I can't use this. He yeah. goes, well, I love this fucking team. And I was like, all right. <laughs> and I was like, I can't use it, but thanks. <laughs> and um, and he was just like, I love the personalities. He goes, we've got, you know, and we just talked about it. But they've got like their, you know, their Latin Americans. They've mm-hmm. got the Lorenzo Canes, who's a little bit more religious now and sat out last year. Um you have one of the best superstars in the world uh, in Yelich. And I knew that I've known that for years. Cause I was out to dinner a couple of years ago in Milwaukee. T- Yelich came in and you would, he acted like it was like the kid that sold, you know, sold you the newspapers. You didn't know it was Christian Yelich MVP. He's a solid dude. Uh, and some of the people in the upper management with the Brewers were in Cleveland. So I talked to our upper management a little bit about, because everybody talks about the Indians pitching factory, but obviously the Brewers pitching the Brewers, when they redid their facility out in Arizona a couple of years ago, they've obviously done a great job in building their own pitching facility mm-hmm. of, of pitching, of, of learning. And I've, so I've been digging on that and I've, I had seen the numbers on Burns. Devin Williams blew me away last year. Um, obviously haters, uh, unbelievable arm and uh, Wandy yeah, this year. I've So I've paid attention and I've kind of talked to baseball people like, okay, why is their pitching so good? Um, I have a feel for why the Indians have done a really good job of, of, of cultivating pitching, but I wanted to know what the Brewers have been doing. And to me, what the Brewers are doing and what you're going to see a lot of the rest of baseball do, um, they, I mean, I can go through the guys I saw over the weekend and you guys know it better than I. Um, Burns, by the way, should be the Cy Young. And I said it on the I air. hope so. He's, he's yeah. got five. I had our players came back to me. They're like, that dude's got our leadoff hitter, Miles Strauss said, Dre, he's got five plus pitches. He goes, you go up there, and he's like, he's like, all right, you know, I'm gonna sit on that cutter because everybody talks about the cutter, right? He goes, he didn't throw me one for three at bats, and I struck out three times. I'm like, what? The f-? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. And he's like, and all the pitches were nasty. Bobby yeah. Bradley came back to me in the first, uh, the second inning, uh, in, the, in the no hitter, and I go, because he w- it was like a three pitch or four pitch strikeout. You can go back and look it up. Trust me. And I go, Bobby, I go, what was it like? He goes, shit. He goes, the first pitch was a cutter in. The second pitch was a was a change up away. And he goes, moving. And he goes, and the last one went like this. He goes, so that motherfucker gave me this, this, and this. He goes, what am I supposed to do? And walked out to first base. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what I would say is the Brewers, the great thing they're doing, um, and I can say this, I'll say it the shortest way I could say it. 
they are building towards the people that they have rather than trying to make these pitchers be who they want them to be. If you if you got a great cutter, we're going to work on making that cutter the best cutter you can have. If you want to have a great four-seamer, we're going to do that. The change-up with Devin Williams, we're going to show you how to do it best. Um, how they're using Hader this year and not making go multiple you know multiple mm-hmm. innings, beautiful. Six-man rotation, beautiful. Um, I just like what they're doing with their arms and how they're taking care of their arms, and I think it's going to help them in the long run. Yeah, Council has been really, really good. I feel like he's really underrated as a manager, but he has been really well. He's done well this season with the six-man rotation, and he mentioned in this past offseason heading into spring training that Hader was only going to be the traditional closer. Uh, In previous seasons, he had gone multiple innings, and I think in the postseason we'll see him do that. Yes. Uh, because you got to do what you have to do to win the game. Francisco, but, you guys are going to play little league games in the, oh, seriously, yeah. in the playoffs. You're going to play, you're going to play five to six inning games. And like you said, Hater can go multiple. Williams can go multiple. And you, and, and look, the thing they did with Burns and, and not to cut you off. I'm sorry. The mm-hmm. other thing that I love what they've done, two of the best pitchers in baseball started off being in the bullpen in the playoffs a couple of years ago, and they weren't starters. They're going to do that with a help. Somebody is going to come out of the bullpen. That's been starting for them this year. So mm-hmm. whoever's going to face them, good luck. You better score early because the last four innings are going to be hell. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's, that's what, that's what no they way. did in 2018. And and it was like, you know, because they had uh, Jeffress and Hader was going two innings and Canable was coming. Back, and it was just right. like, right, yeah, good luck. Like if, if you don't have runs on the board by the fifth, you're not getting them. Hey, um, I watched I watched the Indians in 16 almost win a World Series by doing that with Andrew Miller. Yeah, we were they rode ball. him hard. Uh, that the whole postseason, no, <laughs> but they, 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 it, it almost worked. Yeah, it almost worked. If it wasn't for that rain delay, I think that kind of uh, we don't need to get into. Yeah, I'm, I'm about to close my. Computer. <laughs> <laughs> we, no, we didn't want the Cubs to win, so like we're not, we're not happy either. I, mm. I'll tell you this much: I was Madison has a very large contingent of Cubs fans. Most of Wisconsin does, and I was one. I, I was calling around town trying to find a shop that had a Cleveland hat. Oh. the night or the day before game one, like you got one in stock or I'm on my way. And by the time I got there, it was sold, but I was the only dude running around. I think I listened that whole series. The only song I listened to was machine gun, Kelly <laughs> CLE till I die. Brother, <laughs> you play that song in the right club at the right place in Cleveland. Like literally like, like a riot, a good one breaks yeah. out. Like that song, like people hear the first beat and it's like, <laughs> and like everybody's like, till I die. Yeah. And I, I'm still, still, Cleveland until I die. Just appreciate you, man. Just because. Hey, if you're a Milwaukee guy, Green Bay guy, you anytime you come to visit Cleveland, you definitely know you'll fit right. That's what I tell all my I tell all my friends about Milwaukee, Green Bay, because I've traveled there with, with the Browns. I've traveled there with the Indians. If you love living in, living in Cleveland, you'll love going to Milwaukee. Um, we like beer. We like brats. We like it's same people. Same people. And every time I go out in Milwaukee, no joke, I've run into Latrell Sprewell three different times hanging out in Milwaukee in different years <laughs> and Greg Vaughn true story. <laughs> and oh, I don't Vaughn hang out at like, great. and I don't hang out at ritzy places. Either. <laughs> Todd does. Todd's a big ritzy guy. Very, very bougie. Yeah. <laughs> clearly, oh, Todd's a, clearly. Todd's a bougie. Yeah, I see. <laughs> With my, my wonderful living room set up here. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so who do you like in the, the American league? You said, you know, the, the national league, you've got brewers and, and Dodgers. Who do you think is going to go to the ALCS and um, ultimately face the brewers in the world series? It's a good question because the AL East is beating the hell out of each other right now. Yeah. Um, the white Sox depends upon their health um, in all reality, because they've got something set up. I'm saying pitching wise, what Similar they've set up brewers. in their bullpen. Like you know, and 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 Copic, like they they can they can play five inning games too. The question I have is is how healthy is Lynn? Um, they need a horse because the lefty Keiko's not the same anymore. Um, I know when Giolito gets it going, that change up fastball combination, and because of his height, um, like I've watched him dominate because that high fastball comes and stays on this flight, and when he can throw that change up right, it'll take you four or five innings to figure it out. But he hasn't. He hasn't been the same guy he was last year, but I just know in a short series, Abreu is one of the best uh, RBI guys in baseball. I, I give love to the AL. I know from afar people look at the AL Central, but the AL Central beats the hell out of each other, and they make you a man by the time you get to the playoffs. If you don't believe it, look over the last 10 years. KC, Indians, 
Uh, Minnesota can't beat the Yankees, so they don't count. But, <laughs> but otherwise, I don't like Minnesota. Thank you. Um, Dude, how bad is not, it that Minnesota has gone to the postseason and the Yankees have been their one every like, time? Every time. It's like they're there waiting for them, like easy out. <laughs> yeah, the Yankees could have us three playing in the outfield. They're like, oh, the Twins are coming? We're good. <laughs> like, yeah, no problem. Fine. Everybody uh, rest up. Yeah. So I would say them. Um, I don't know what's going to happen in the West. Houston is Houston. I'm going to say I, I, you don't want to face Toronto. I don't think Toronto's no. back in. I don't think the back end of their bullpen is worthy. Um, but everything else with Toronto can be a problem. And, and you've got to go to Toronto. Their fans are crazy. I've been to playoff series in Toronto. It's like going to a hockey game, game seven every day, which is fun, but it's nerve wracking. Yeah, I had Jeff Bloom, uh, Blum, Bloom, Blummer, I know <laughs> Blum on, uh, on a couple uh, days ago, and he said that uh, he can see the uh, the White Sox and the Brewers in in the World Series pretty easily. Um, I I would love if, that. Uh, if Midwest. That's the, case, I'm, if that's the case. I'm going to stay at my uh, brother in law's for a couple of days. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And but he also he also said that the Astros could do it. Obviously, he covers a team. You know, he sees them on a day to day basis. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I feel like the White Sox, they're still the team to beat coming out of the AL. Um, but Tampa well, Bay, like they're sneak. They, they're so good. And like you said, they're athletic and they have pitching and they have all these prospects that are coming up. And like they have that unfinished business kind of mindset, too, right. where they want to come back and finish a job. So I, I don't Let know. Let me say I, this. I like if, Wander really Frank, if Wander Franco doesn't get healthy, they can't. He's a spark yeah. plug like no one else. They have all those prospects. You're right. But there's no prospect like him. Like he's, spe- he, I hate to say it because they're all special, but he's special. And you know what I mean? Like, yeah, he yeah. brings an element to the game that you just can't account for. Right. They do have Willie Adamas. Oh, wait, no, he's on, he's on the Brewers now. That's why <laughs> the Brewers have a chance to win it <laughs> That's all. That's right. He, what, what, what were your thoughts on that trade? Um, Surprising because I, I got to know Willie a little bit because him and Lindor knew each other. You would be amazed at how many guys like know each other or work out together in the off season. Um, and Willie was one of those that I kind of knew a little bit and I knew, and like, I know a couple coaches with Tampa and I knew that they wanted to get Wander Franco up there, but I was like, you're not going to move Willie. He's like your, your heart and soul. And they're like, mm-hmm. they're like, we got to do it. And I know, I know, for, and you guys know more better than me. Cause you've had him. I know that he changed a bunch of his stuff hitting, hitting wise in the off season. And it just wasn't clicking in Tampa at the beginning of the year. And he kind of had that effort moment when he got traded over to the Brewers of I'm going to go use everything I worked on in practice. And mm-hmm. damn, it changed the Brewer season. It changed all of baseball, really. It really did. Yeah. Yeah. We were under like 500 at the time. Right. And we've been one of the best teams in the National League ever since then. And yeah, uh, me, yeah. And let me give him credit. I watched little things. Um, He's not playing right now, but he's on the top step of the dugout. He's one of the biggest cheerleaders right now. Dude, that go. I know like sometimes that comes off his eyewash, but it was real. He has a real excitement for his teammates. And you could tell, like, when they left Cleveland, it was like Willie Adamas did not play a game, but his presence was felt. That's that's important. Remember that. Yeah. Yeah. And Francisco and I talked about that a lot. I mean, early in the season, it was like we'd start texting each other in the sixth inning if we were down two runs. Like, if it was, like, three to one, it'd be like, you just want to start recording now that they're not going to win. <laughs> yeah. Like, there's no way they're going to score four runs tonight. Right. Um, and And it was brutal. And then Willie came in and – and one of the things that we talked about a lot was that there wasn't that fire, you know, going back to, to 18 and, and 19, like the ball club was having fun and they just didn't have that there anymore. And as soon as Willie came in, um, I don't even think he played the first game he was in town for. And he was the first one to meet somebody when they came out for a home run. Like, really, wow. yeah. And, and that's just been him since he's been here. Like you said, he's, he's hurt. He's still traveling with the team. He's still around them. Um, and it, it's, it's infectious, right? Yeah, and yeah. and honestly, it, it might be the the biggest trade of the year uh, when it comes down to it. You know, everybody looks at a lot of those trade deadline ones, but getting him when the Brewers did and what he was able to do before the trade deadline gave them that ability at the trade deadline that they didn't have to go make that big splash. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, right. uh, Escobar has been fantastic, but you know there were a lot of big names out there that that we kind of thought maybe they'd go get. And they didn't have to do that because of getting Willie Adamas in May. Well, and the other thing, and you guys know better than I, but having Christian Yelich not be Christian Yelich all year, you're saved. Yeah. 
you're sitting, you know, like, and like, yeah. and we looked at the out and then, and not knowing what Lorenzo Kane was going to be like after come, missing all the last season, what you've gotten from the big guy out in right field is huge. Um, cause we've watched him year after year. We, we used to call him baby Miggy when he came up, yeah, yeah you yeah. know, with, with, with Detroit and you always knew there was a ton of talent there, but it was always like, he'd have a good month or two months and then he'd get in a fight with the coach or whatever, you know, it, it he found a perfect home in Milwaukee. So you guys have the right cast. I don't want to say cast offs, yeah. but they do. They got the kind right of, cast yeah. offs and they got a really cool clubhouse. They got to do with the, the, the new meat hook. Uh, I can't think of his name, but uh, the, the D, he's a DH, but he's, he's a backup first base. Vogelbach. Oh, who Danny Vogelbach. The, yeah. Yeah. Who it's the, it's the grand slam pitch at grand slam the other night. He fits. I mean, he looks like a Milwaukee brewer. Yeah. <laughs> when yeah. you think Milwaukee, you think Vogelbach. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, uh, question for you, um, uh, Dre. Um, we know, we've all season and like the off season, really. We heard about the Dodgers and their rotation and the Padres and all the talent that they have, uh, and then the Giants, the resurgence of Buster Posey and Crawford and their core. Uh, meanwhile, you know, we're talking about the Brewers. They've had one of the best. They're they're probably going to have their best uh, French uh, best season in franchise history. Um, do you think this team can go? Toe to toe with the Dodgers in the postseason, um, or even the, say, the White yeah. Sox, if they happen to make it that far. I'll, I'll answer it like this: None of us experts thought the Giants were worth crap. The Giants have controlled baseball. Other than the Brewers, are going to have the most road victories in their entire history this year. Yeah, that is unfathomable that's unbelievable so yes I, I truly do think they can because of the intangibles we've already kind of talked about um Kristen Yellich has not come close to having his best season I keep going back to that and if his back is finally healthy and he because here's the thing about the playoffs a guy like him if he gets hot for three four games dude you're you know what I mean? like literally yeah. like he can he can win you a series yeah. and when you have one player that can win you a series and you guys got a couple guys that can win you a series um yeah and, and like i mean just like the giants can so yeah I, it's, it's the hottest team going in as you were talking about todd i thought it was great um i would look brewer I, there's certain team scores i look up all the time just like in the passing and like for the first two months of the season i was like damn the brewers can't score <laughs> like, I, like i remember like i, I even settled there one time i was like the brewers are in extra innings every night what the heck is going on with their offense and i'm this is back in like may yeah, so I've been, been paying attention to all, all those I, extra innings too. Yeah, I see. I was paying attention and I was like, why? Are, and I don't have any notes up or anything else. This is just, I, I'm, I love sports. I think playing in all those extra inning games early and not, and having to find offense until they found offense that helps in October, brother. Oh yeah. For yeah, sure. That's, I mean, this team we talk about all the time, they win in so many different ways. And I, I think that's kind of what you see with Tampa too, is, you know, there's not someone there that's just doing it every single night, but somebody different's going to find a way. You know, we talk about guys this year that had their moment with the Brewers. Billy McKinley was one that for a week and a half, he, he won us three, four games and he's been on two teams since. Then. Right. Didn't you guys have a white dude named Tyrone Trammell or whatever? I was like, man, that's Tyrone like Taylor. Tyrone Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> See, I was like, I remember I said to our producer, I was like, man, I could have swore Tyrone Taylor was a brother. Where is he at? And they're like, he's on left field. I was like, that's Tyrone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Only in Wisconsin. <laughs> See, I know your guys roster. <laughs> Even guys that aren't on the team anymore. <laughs> yeah. We've had some really, uh, like everyone has stepped up big in this, this season. A lot of injuries. You talk about Christian Yelich. He hasn't been right. Even when he was playing and then he's missed significant time um, throughout the season. We've had a lot of injuries and yeah, people step up and that's really been uh, I give credit to the, the manager to counsel and what he's been able to do to get these players to step up from the Billy McKinney's to the Tyrone Taylor's um, and, you know, moving on down to the, the Adamas's and, and Christian Yelich's of the team. Uh, I don't think he gets enough credit for what he's doing. And uh, I think this team has a really good shot. Like he said, like I like we've talked about it this past couple of months. Like this team has a really good shot at doing some big things uh, once it comes time for the postseason. For sure. I would say to your fans that are listening, enjoy these moments.